Hello, my name is Sean Cowley and I work in the biochemistry department at the University of Leicester. My lab is interested in the regulation of gene expression and we look at enzymes which modify histones in order to bring about activating and inactivated genes. So particular enzymes that we work on are histone deacetylases or HDACs and their role in the cell is to remove the acetyl group from lysine residues. Now in the context of histones, histones have long and terminal tails which are rich in lysine residues and so deacetylation promotes both histone DNA interactions and histone histone interactions and so you get a more condensed form of chromatin. In addition to that, there's also a signaling effect of the lysine modification. That's that it's recognized by proteins with bromo domains. And so you can bring in dock. It's, it's a signal mark for bringing in docking molecules to bromatin also. It's a little bit more simple than phosphorylation in that rather than being there being 500 kinases, there are only 18 HAT acetyltransferases and 18 histone deacetylases. And you can see from the phylogenetic tree that they can be classified into four separate classes. And my lab is interested in the class 1 enzymes, HDAC1, 2, 3, and 8, which are down in the bottom right-hand corner of the phylogenetic tree here. My lab is interested in HDAC1 and 2, and you can see that they're really sister proteins that are on the same branch of the phylogenetic tree. The class 1 HDAC enzymes are not found as sort of soluble enzymes in the cell. They're always part of multi-protein complexes. And for HDAC1 and 2, there are three main complexes called Syn3A, NERD, and CORES. Now, apart from HDAC1 and 2, they don't share many components between the three complexes. And in fact, knockout studies in mice have told us that these three complexes are not redundant, so they all have unique features. In addition to deacetylation, they also have other histone-modifying enzymes as well. So, for instance, in the NERD complex, we have a protein called MY2-beta, which is an ATPase, which also remodels chromatin. Whereas in CORES, we have a protein called LSD1, which is also a demethylase. Now, these complexes are in every cell in the body, they're exclusively nuclear, and they're targeted to the chromatin, where they modify rates of gene expression. And of course, as enzymes, HDACs are attractive drug targets, and there are many small molecule inhibitors which bind to the active site of HDACs that have been known since the 70s, and some of these are clinically used. So if you put HDAC inhibitors onto cells, for instance, cells will stop growing and in many instances undergo apoptosis. These tools are a little bit blunt in that they tend to affect all of the zinc-dependent HDACs, that's HDACs 1 through 11. Now, they are used clinically, so there's a particular disease called cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, which occurs a relatively rare disease, which happens as you get an expansion of CD4 T-cells under the skin. Mostly it kind of exhibits itself as a rash, and that's called mycosis fungoides, but this can become metastatic to form something called Cesarzy syndrome, and that's treated as a monotherapy with HDAC inhibitors. It appears to be relatively effective in doing so. So my lab then was interested in removing the activity of HDAC1 and 2, particularly from T-cells, and we can do that using a Cree-LOX model, and the Cree is driven by LCK, which is a T-cell-specific Cree, so we're looking really at cell autonomous effects. Now, each that one or two are expressed everywhere, of course, so we could pick any cell types, but of the complex members from Syn3A, 2-beta, for instance, have been knocked out in T-cells and shown a strong phenotypic effect. And, of course, this is the particular cell type in which HDAC inhibitors are used in the clinic to treat CTCL. So we crossed our mice, we crossed HDAC1 and HDAC2 flox mice containing the LCK Cree to generate all the combinations of HDAC1 and HDAC2 knockouts. And to summarize a lot of data, a lot of work into a single slide. What we see is that if we delete both HDAC1 and 2 simultaneously is that cells become blocked as double knockout cells. But because the mouse wants to make T cells, it quickly selects for cells which are still able to express HDAC2. And so what we effectively accumulate then are HDAC1 knockout HDAC2 HET cells. Now if we look in those cells and we measure the HDAC activity, and particularly the HDAC activity associated with the NERD complex, then we see an 80% reduction in the deacetylase activity associated with NERD. And if we knock down the HDAC activity, then you might assume that histone acetylation will go up, and that is the case. We see a three-fold increase in histone H3K9 acetylation. We also did a microarray analysis on these cells, and we found that genes downstream of the T-cell receptor were also downregulated. So we think we're actually downregulating the T-cell receptor signal, and therefore these cells get stuck really, as immature T-cells, as either immature single positive T-cells or double positive T-cells. Now, these cells will accumulate in the thymus, and the thymus really is a large bag of T-cells. What happens is the bag will get increasingly larger as the T-cells accumulate. But what will happen eventually is the cells will leave the thymus and go out into the periphery, into the spleen, and into the lymph nodes. And in the top right-hand corner of the slide, you'll see actually what happens is that we get tumors. So you see a mouse here with a hugely enlarged thymus. And what's happened is that we've accumulated immature T cells. They've accumulated in the thymus, they've gone out, and you get a very large spleen. And these mice have effectively died about 12 weeks of age from an acute leukemia. If we take those cells and we actually then begin to analyze the number of chromosomes using CGH analysis, what we see is that there's an amplification of certain chromosomes. So we see trisomy of chromosome 2, trisomy of chromosome 15. And chromosome 15 is particularly interesting. It's a hallmark, really, of acute leukemias, particularly mice, and that it contains a very important gene called CMEC. And CMEC is thought to amplify transcription and virtually drive all known cancer types. And so we see trisomy of chromosome 15, and we also see upregulation of CMIC at the protein level. 
So to sum up then, HDAC1 and 2 are important for proliferation, for T-cell development, and that a suboptimal amount of HDAC1-2 activity results in the accumulation of immature T-cells and acute leukemia.